You're listening to the Dudes and Dads Podcast, a show dedicated to helping men be better dudes and dads by building community through meaningful conversation and storytelling. And now, here are your hosts, Joel DeMott and Andy Lehman. Joel. Andrew. What's up, my friend? Well, here's the deal, Andy. Uh, I've said it before. I've said it again. The month of March, we know it's a disappointment. It's a disappointment where we live. It's It's, tough, yeah. It's tough, but we always hold out hope for April. And April ended up juking us, being a complete disappointment itself. Rainy, snowy, nothing. I mean, we we got like one, we got one fair weather day. (laughs) And so here we are in May. Here we are in May, Anthony. Andy? 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 Here we are in May. You'd think we haven't done this thing in a long, uh, long time. It's, it's uh, we're, we're getting we're getting there. It. We're getting at it. Um, oh, so hey, we got a fun, let's we got a let's, fun, yeah, the fun video image. How about there? Uh, hey, oh, we there we go. That's hey, better. Better. Uh, yeah, we. So here we are. We're hoping for better things. Uh, we're hoping for, we're hoping for campouts, fire out, fi- fire outside the the bonfire, the fellowship. All of those things, all of the good to things. finally come our way, uh, and so we hope we hope those things are true for you as well. They're listening that, that <laughs> wherever you are, maybe and maybe with some of our listeners who are in slightly warmer climates, uh, maybe you're there you've, already. You've been there already <laughs> and enjoying it, right? So you, you got it. For the rest of us, it's been tough, but uh, yes, here we are, Andy, picking back up uh, this episode. We we're super excited about because it's a uh, well, we did we tried something new, didn't we? We did. We almost like, okay, so we said we wanted to do the Enneagram because yeah. it's something that we, we've wanted to do for a while. And so we are going to be talking about the Enneagram. If you've never heard of it, stay tuned because we're actually going to do kind of a kickoff today. Kickoff. And those of you who don't know, there's nine Enneagram types. And I, we hope to do episodes on each of those types in the mm. future, not back to back. We'll spread them way out. You but. know, we should say right now. Uh, if any of our listeners out there who have, you know, either uh, we'll say, we'll say semi seriously dabbled in the Enneagram or have just gone on uh, full right. bore who know their, who know their number and are, uh, have done, you know, have gotten familiar, some work, some work. They should reach out to us. We would love to have a conversation. We would. And the, you can actually even call our voicemail number, which is 574-213-8702. 574-213-8702 is our voicemail number. We would love to hear from you and your experience with the Enneagram. We won. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So uh, before we get to this episode, before we get to our guest, we should also share with the people uh, the lovely partnerships that we have. Andy, don't you think? I, I do. So I think the <laughs> I'm really messing the video up today. <laughs> some some people can't. The listeners can't see. And Andy's we're. I'll be honest with you. the the graphics The graphic presentation, Andy, continues to to, to <laughs> there, both get better. But there's there's there's, some, there's weirdness. There's with weirdness it. sometimes. There's with weirdness me. with it. So, okay. anyways, uh, yeah. that's <laughs> watch on our YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, dudesanddadspodcast dot com slash YouTube. Uh, the, our sponsors for the night are going to be Concrete Barber. Get yourself over there. Get a haircut. I got my haircut, Joel, this week from Concrete Barber, and it's. I had more comments today about it yep. than ever before the, because they they see you and they go, uh, first of all, uh, what a dapper gentleman, number one, <laughs> and and two, who does your uh, Andy? By the way, there is no greater joy for me uh, because uh, to well as the day after you all hear this show, I'll be uh, in there for my uh, for my beard my beard grooming because th- this thing's gotten out of control, but. Uh, there is no greater uh, joy for me than meeting people who need men who are like, I need a barber and I'm able to say, let me tell Dude, you. Yeah. Dudes and or uh, <laughs> concrete barber head on over to the dudes and dads official barber. Uh, DJ, we love you. Thank you for, uh, for keeping us fresh and uh, we're continue to send people your way because uh, you are like a, you're like a barber oasis in a, in a desert wasteland of, of, uh, that's a pretty specific there, Joel. It doesn't, it, it, I really got specific, but anyway, concrete barber head over there, check them out. And our other sponsor for this episode is you, our Patreons keep us going. You get extra bonus stuff, shows behind the scenes, coffee mugs, stickers, all sorts of stuff. And there's all 
kinds of levels. So if you can only pay $2 a month, then that's awesome. We appreciate you. All the way up to one hundred dollars a month. One hundred dollars a you month. You get to name our studio. You get to yes. <laughs> so the studio will be named after you, and uh, that's no small. That's so, no small thing. Dudesanddads dot com slash Patreon for that. So Andy, uh, something else I just thought of because we did have a recent interaction with our good friend James Kennison here recently, uh, who just gave us a we we contribute back and forth, whatever. Uh, we just want to say hi to, hi to James fellow, fellow podcaster, James, if you're watching, hello, we miss you. We hope that we should, we should have him back on. We should, we should talk cause he's doing some new and exciting things too. So it's, it's that, yeah, that we should, but he left us a review. He did leave us a very nice review. So at uh, dudes and dads.com slash rate and review dudes and dads podcast, dudes and dads podcast. Did I not say that? Oh you're, man. You're, emitting the podcast people be like dudes and you know what quite honestly i don't know what is at the website dudesanddads.com uh don't we go either there. we either approve it or totally don't depending on what happens <laughs> wow <laughs> right on, on the other. well joel tonight we have a guest uh who is a previously recorded guest because we she couldn't make it on the show live with us so yeah we're uh, a new like recording territory here so you actually stepped in and said hey why don't you come to my other studio and re- record <laughs> of the many studios that we have we've just placed studios all around the county and we, just depending where we are and who we go we're yeah with, we just we just pop in so anyways megan joined you in your studio yes and uh we talked a li- with her a little bit about the enneagram so without further ado let's welcome megan to the show megan sponseller here she is oh and uh afterwards we'll have to also have to uh plug her her resources so yes, yes. definitely hi megan Hello, Joel. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have Megan here, um, and this is a this is an interesting one because uh, this is our first episode. I think where we've uh, we've I've conducted an interview separate. Uh, Andy's not in the booth with me uh, currently, but well, as you've already heard in this episode, he's he is with me before the show, and he's with me after. Well, he's with me before the recording and after the official recording, but. Uh, thanks for coming, Megan. We just before we get started, I think the uh, the helpful thing to do is for us just for us just to hear about you, uh, your background, and what got you interested in the Enneagram. Because if you haven't noticed, we are interviewing you like a complete expert here, uh, <laughs> because you made a, you published a book and you've got smart things to tell us, but. Uh, first and foremost, we always care. We always want to hear about, uh, yeah, your uh, your background, where you come from, uh, any family stuff you want to tell us, all that good stuff. So here's your here's your here's your bio. Go for it. Got it. Thanks for having me, Joel. Yeah, I'm not going to say that I'm an expert on the Enneagram by okay. any means. That's that's there's great. much more that I could know that I don't know, and I have a lot to learn about it. Um, but yeah, I'm from Goshen, Indiana, so right around here. Um, went to Huntington University College, just graduated last spring. Um, I majored there in art education and graphic design. I am currently a graphic designer um, in Elkhart, and I just recently got married to my husband, Isaac, who I met at Huntington. Um, I was just looking at this, not to sound creepy, but I was just looking at your guys' wedding photos the other day because it came up, I think it came up in memories or whatever, <laughs> something like that. And I was like, I was like, oh gosh, like that's... Like you're, you're coming up on, well, what, August, August, July, July, July will be one year, July will be one year. So, okay. Hopefully you've got hope. I'm sure Isaac's got all the uh, one year anniversary plans all nailed down. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I, Isaac's in the studio <laughs> with us as well. He's saying yes. So we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so husband, Isaac, you guys have been married for almost a year. Yep. Yep. And that's, uh, so what, what do you, so you are a graphic designer mm-hmm. currently. Um, what was it? And, and I, because this will, this kind of, well, this is just like for a bonus. This is like bonus. Like you were looking to go into the education, like the art education route and ended up as a professional graphic designer. Mm-hmm. Uh, was that an easy shift to make? Was I, was that expected unexpected? Like how did you, how did you navigate that? Yeah. Um, great question. I honestly, like ever since kindergarten, first grade, you know, you have those books that your parents keep track and like keep track of what you want to be when you grow up every year. Ever since first grade, I've always said I want to be an art teacher. Yeah. And then look at me now. I'm not. Yeah. But really the end goal is I really enjoy educating and 
um, I figured out like through graphic design and like even writing this book, like you can educate even without being a formal teacher. That's so great. And I would love to get back into the education system at some point, but right now I'm just using graphic design as a way to communicate with people and educate. All of our educators that are listening are going, Megan, are you sure about that? I know. <laughs> Maybe not in the normal education. Sure. Yeah. And, and I, and I will say, yeah, that's, that's such a great vision. I think the, ability um and and as we'll get into the handbook here that you that you put together i i totally agree that sometimes the the way to help educate people just comes from other just other streams other other Mm -hmm. opportunities and in the world in which we live in right now um you know resources are available to people in so many different in so many different ways and so uh that's what we want to talk about because uh yeah and I, I don't um our our goal here and we've said it on the show is that we want to introduce our friends to our other friends because we think we we know some pretty cool people who've done some pretty cool things and as I've said Megan that's what, and I I stand by this uh the, the other because the the background story here that the the that our listeners need to know is Megan was a student in my youth ministry back when I back well a few years ago anyway so she's just one more person contributing to me feeling older all the time but uh this this Enneagram handbook which we will um as we're talking about this Enneagram handbook this a link to it will be put in our show notes you guys will have access to it see what we're talking about um this thing that you did just makes me feel like I'm just glad, like, I'm glad to know somebody that has done something like this, like that. (laughs) I'm just like super excited. I'm like, Oh, Megan. Wow. Like I know her and, um, and she did this really, really cool thing. It's really, really creative. So I just, I am immensely proud of you. I just want to say that, uh, as I'm sure so many other people have, but, um, really, really cool to see, uh, how this, uh, this resource has come out. So, let me just begin by asking the first question. How did you first become acquainted with the Enneagram? Yeah, so I really didn't know much about the Enneagram until I got to college. Um, and I've like I had heard like a little bits from different people about it. And then the one day my roommate walked in my room and said, Hey, just read this like first chapter of this book. I just want to see what you think about it. And I just reading that, I felt so exposed and it just like I was like, Wow, like why does it know this stuff about me? And yeah. Um like I wanted to keep reading. I never, I didn't finish that whole book, but just, um, just like reading it, it really opened my eyes. And from there, um, I just read some other books and just like, just was asking different people and just hearing like other people's responses to the same thing. Um, just hearing how just surprised they were that like they could understand themselves better just by like using the system. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I think, you know, as Andy and I, and our, our goal is we're going to have a few other shows that are here kind of dive into some of the other aspects of the Enneagram. And the reason we want to start with this conversation is just having a good kind of overview perspective. And as someone who's had to think through how to communicate an overview perspective in a very concise way, which, which you've, you've done here, and it's what we really love this resource. Um, so as you first, as you became acquainted with it, was there a, was there like uh did it, did it develop a hunger within you to like go deeper or was it something that you saw personally for you as kind of a like a i don't know if a scary thing or was there it was like uncertainty attached with it at some level yeah i think there's a lot of curiosity with it just um just reading that first little bit and i don't think necessarily i it was right away a thing that i caught on to but something in college i did was every summer um well i just love learning so yeah. Every summer, like when I wasn't in classes, I would dedicate to like learn something. So like freshman year, I did something. But then sophomore year, I was working in an internship, um, doing some marketing and graphic design. And through that, I could listen to podcasts and music and whatever. And so I used that opportunity to like really focus on the Enneagram. And that's when I really like gained a lot of my knowledge. I listened to a couple different books, um, just all the podcasts that were out there, just um I just had like a hunger to learn more and just even understand like not just myself, but like how I can relate this and understand others better with it too. Yeah. So, uh, because you've had to do this, uh, in the most concise way possible, what would you, 
how would you describe the like so somebody has never come in contact with the enneagram they have no concept you desire to explain it to them in a way that does not sound like absolute voodoo uh <laughs> what um yeah what, what do you say how do you how do you describe it to be honest i was dreading this question from you <laughs> because i think it is very hard to like sum up in a sentence or two sure and so i'll do my best but you know, yeah. this might not be the best answer, but I would say um, it's first off a tool, a tool for you to use. Anyone can use it, but it is a system that explains personality and it divides um, basically everyone up into nine different ways that people see the world. It's based on each number is based on um, everyone's core motivation. Mm-hmm. So, you know, every there's n- nine basic core motivations. Understanding um, your core motivation helps you to understand why you do what you do, yep. why you think what you think, you know, it understands. And then you can understand why others think what they think. And it kind of a lot of people explain it as it's your default way when you're not thinking about what you're doing, your default way of functioning in this world and how you see this, like your world view, basically. Yeah. I think what I have found helpful about it, because you use that term core, like core motivation, like motivational uh, things, core motivations. Um, a lot of other person, personality test Myers Briggs, I'll just throw that one out. That's a pretty common one. People know of, of um, all useful, again, useful tools. The other assessments tend to look at behaviors, external behaviors. Um, what I found really interesting about the Enneagram is it looks at motivations and, and that uh, specifically in a, in a relational context can be really, really helpful uh, because let's just be honest. You and I are not terribly good at, as any human being are not terribly good at initially identifying our motive, our, our motivations behind oh, yeah. things. We can identify our behaviors in certain settings like, okay, in this, in this situation, I tend to do this thing. Okay, that can be helpful, but why? Mm-hmm. Where, where, like, where does it, where does it come from? Like, in my case, my actions just tend to come from a deep, interceded need to uh, be liked by other people. Uh, so, you know, and you know, I, we, I, I think, I think what happens so many times, uh, Megan, maybe you've seen this, is that, um, when people begin to get a sense of what their number is. Then there is also this, depending on your personality, uh, a little bit of a pushback on not wanting to be ident- like not like don't tell me what I am or don't you know don't identify me or I don't want to be put into a box and that's kind of our culture now right like mm-hmm. I don't you know I don't want to be told this specific thing about my about myself you know because maybe I'm I'm probably more complex than that um, and the enneagram would allow for would allow for that would allow for uh, difference and variation for you personally, as you were like walking the journey of f- figuring out your own personal number and, and, and who you were, um, what was that? What was that like? Because you, we, as before we went on here tonight, you, you said, okay, first I thought I was this and then kind of came to a realization that I was probably actually this. What, what was that experience like for you? Yeah. Um, when I first, yeah, like you said, like when I first um, thought or learned about this, and even for a couple of years after I first learned about it, it was actually not until I wrote this book that I realized I wasn't actually the number I thought I was, yeah. which is like kind of crazy. But like it does take a lot of study and a little bit of work to really be able to understand your number. Um, and for that, for me, um, I think a lot of times when people say like when they find out their number, they feel very exposed and almost like naked yeah. and like, like they don't want other people to see that number cause they don't want to see all their faults. Um, cause that is part of it is realizing, um, the sin that you have in your life and you know, yep. those, those faults that you have, you don't want other people to know. And so for me, I did experience that a little bit with the number that I had, but like, honestly, I did kind of embrace that number. It was like, yeah, I, I like this. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm proud. I'm a one. Yeah. But in reality, Um, once I came to the realization that I was actually a three, it was just like, yeah, that's the number that I really didn't want to be. So, so for our our Enneagram newbies, uh, 
tell 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 us what a one is and then tell us what a three and tell us why because those two types uh are, are frequently confused for each mm-hmm. other um can kind of be on the kind of be on the fence one way or the other it, explain that explain the differences and and how they can be confused yeah so a one um is usually a lot of times it's referred to as the reformer or the perfectionist um and really just their ideal and like their motivation behind it is wanting to just be that perfect thing because that's the right thing to do. Yep. Um, and so that's quick summary on a yeah. one. There's yeah. a lot more to it sure. than that, but that's good. Um, for the three, um, they are more about um, driven by success and gaining admiration of others and being well liked and um, really based on what, what their works are yep. is what they want to be defined as. Yep. And so for that, a lot of times a three, I would like as a three, I'd rather way more be thought of as a one because yeah. they are very pure in their motivation. <laughs> right. I mean, in where some, you achievers are just like, I'm just trying to get the, get the admiration, yeah, get yeah. the accolades. Yeah, yeah. Which the three is known as the achiever. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 And that's, I, I just, uh, I so often look at the numbers and, so, some people are so quick to embrace, like to embrace their number to say yes, that's me, and then others are like, I, th- don't, I, I don't, I don't think this is who I am. And it's funny because if you get them in a room of like three other people that know them well, I, I frequently find they'll be like, that is a hundred percent you. That's <laughs> yes. that's totally you. Which w- would you say it's a helpful process to 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 as you're kind of exploring this and looking for and really with any assessment. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there a value for community there to help kind of navigate and talk through who you are and what you're discovering about yourself? Oh yeah. I think, um, in a lot of ways there is, I do like warn against people being like, Hey, I think you're this, I think you're this. Cause that is like, I don't know what your motivation is. Like right. really you're the only one that knows your motivation, but even just going through this, it can be a really tough process, like just identifying it. Cause it's a lot of, um, just self discovery and, you know, coming to terms with, yeah, we're all not the greatest people. And I mean, there's a lot of good in each of us, but um, just coming to terms with that and just like having support around you being like, hey, do you see this true about me? Do you see this mm-hmm. true about me? Um, that's where I think the support comes in. So, and Megan, you've uh, you've used some, uh, I think, distinctly spiritual language around this. You've kind of hinted at that. And uh, I think uh, so there's a few things I want to explore here within the realm of faith specifically. Um, Christians, certain Christians or groups of Christians have really flocked to the Enneagram, have, have seen uh, have seen it possible through a theological lens to be really, really helpful uh, in light of in light of a belief about someone being made in the image of God and and having each person having uniqueness. I, I always like to, I think of uh, my spiritual director, you know, he uses this term. He goes, you are a unique, unrepeatable miracle of God, right? Like this is a blessing. He speaks over of people. And, uh, and the Enneagram would affirm, would affirm that or mm-hmm. can affirm that in that it's like, listen, you're not all a bunch of robots numbered one through nine. Like that's, that's not what's going on here. Yeah. Um, it, so, so there is a kind of a long spiritual tradition within the Enneagram. I think some of the pushback has come from, well, some, some of these are mystic traditions. Like for those of us that are coming from, uh, you know, from kind of that broader evangelical umbrella that we're, we're under, uh, we get a little bit, it's, we get a little bit dicey with it. So we're like, listen, the Bible is all we need. Uh, don't give me, <laughs> don't give me these other fancy systems that are coming from, uh, strange men that, uh, hid out in the desert for, you know, uh, for centuries. Uh, what would you, what would you say has, cause I, so I'd like to hear maybe your specific experience of you were going down this road. You decided like, you're going to dedicate like as an academic project, as a student at Huntington mm-hmm. University, like you're going to go into this, you're going to publish a book. It's like going to be this whole thing. What was the pushback? Because I know there's pushback in this. The, and 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 again, I'm open to that. I I receive that because I I don't I don't think any of us just want to go down a rabbit hole and be like, oh, I'm all in on this thing, especially if it's leading us to unhealthy places. Talk to me about the pushback that you maybe received uh, during this project, because because eventually you went public with your book, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're like, hey, I am publishing this thing. Please buy it. Um, 
Uh, which again, it not a money making campaign for you, I know, but no. more of a you, like you said, you want to help, be helpful, and educate. Mm-hmm. What did you hear back from people? Yeah, I think I had there was just a couple different responses. Obviously, I get the response of like, "Don't put me in a box." Like, I mean, some some people um, come at it like that, and even um, just the response of. Um, really the Bible is the most important thing. And like in reality, yeah, that's true. Like the Bible is the most important thing, but there are tools such as the Enneagram that it can help alongside that. And um, I don't, I don't really see this a lot. I mean, some people will say that this is an issue, but um, people say that sometimes like the Enneagram becomes more important than the Bible. Like in reality, I don't see that happening. Um, Like, even though I studied a summer on it, like that doesn't mean that like the Enneagram was more important than you didn't, you didn't put your Bible up on the shelf and be like, don't need this thing anymore. No, obviously you use them hand in hand. Right. Um, but I've also seen like heard a lot of pushback just from like where it comes from and like yep. the people that were first involved with like yeah. creating this and making this a thing. Yeah. And, um, obviously I think, um, I've talked about this with a couple different people, but, um, anything that is truth has to come from God. There we go. And so if you find truth in it, which I found truth in it, and yep. I'm not going to be one of those people that say, oh, you you have truth and I have truth. Yeah, like, yeah. no, there is, there is some truth in this. If you look into it and um, start to understand it, you'll see, you'll see that there is some truth about just how there's some different ways of people, how people understand yep. the world. And the early, the early church father and theologian Augustine, I mean, we usually attribute this all truth is God's truth quote to him. And I, I think that's one of the wisest things. I think that's a true, uh, for those listening in the evangelical tradition that I, that I have grown up with within that is a um, well, and it's like to quote, like uh, to quote uh, Chris Thassum, also early church father, like, you know, in, in essentials, unity and non essentials, charity and all things Christ. Right. Mm-hmm. So to have this, to have this kind of mindset about these sort of things. So anything that I take up, I'm going to, I'm going to, eat on the meat. I'm going to spit out the bones. I'm going to be discern, discerning oh, yeah. and, and not dismiss every, like not throw the baby out with the bathwater, mm-hmm. not be dismissing, dismissing of everything. So I think you've used the great language of it is a tool mm-hmm. and it is, if it is a tool used while walking in step within faith and, and, and again, the Enneagram is not my Lord and savior. It is not the, you know, it's, it has not saved me. It is not, you know, it has not done those things. Um, those things can all be helpful just as much as anything within like modern science. This is much more of an ancient thing, but anything mm-hmm. within modern science, the, the things that we're learning about personhood within science are really, really helpful. I think they ultimately point back to the beauty of God's creation of how he's intricately made us and made us y- unique. Um, and I think we can engage those things without fear. And it, it just, I, I think that's where we, we can go to a place of fear very easily on, on things like this. Oh yeah. And I'm not getting a sense that you were ever tempted to abandon your core faith principles in the <laughs> no. midst of, in the midst of any of this. Um, and you, obviously you had, you had professors that were, you know, you're at a Christian university institution and there's, they're supportive of this. Um, so, Okay, so you're doing all this study and your art education, graphic design, and you decide, I want to dedicate like my senior project to this thing. And this is where the Enneagram handbook comes from. Mm -hmm. Uh, Did you have any idea what you were undertaking in all of this? No idea. (laughs) Honestly, when I first started this, I had no idea I was writing a book. Yeah. It was supposed to be something much smaller, mm-hmm. almost like a pamphlet. Gotcha. And I just kind of realized that there was more information that I include, still keeping it simplistic. Yep. Um, that would just help people learn more about the Enneagram. And almost, like, not that I would suggest someone just sit down and read the whole book. I know people have, but it's more of something that you can reference and um, look at, like, oh, what's this type? Like, what what characteristics does this type have and like where is their motivation at um kind of more of a reference and then also seeing um how they can get confused and just the relate how each number works with each other in relationship yeah that's which i think is really really helpful um 
the reason I like this resource is because of its concise nature. I think you can, and I'm, I'm just wondering if you had this person in mind, uh, a person that's had no exposure to it whatsoever. I think you can pretty close to hand this to them and say, this is a good 30,000 foot view on the thing and we'll get you, we'll get you into the thick of things without confusing you. Oh yeah. Um, cause I don't know. I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to oversell this Megan, but it's like, I don't know. I don't know of a concise resource like this on the Enneagram. Yeah. And that was like my idea behind yeah. it because I really didn't, I had a lot of different, there's a lot, a lot of, of great books, a lot oh, of great yeah. books and yeah. a lot of different, like, you know, there's stuff on the internet and just where you can get a bit of this here, a bit of this here, but I kind of want to just pull it all together, yep. make it very easy to understand concise, as you said, yep. um, and just easy to flip through. Oh, let's learn about this. Yeah, that's, that's good. So, so you did this project, you published this book. Um, I, I should just say full disclosure, uh, listeners, I have a handful of them sitting on my shelf in my office because it's something, um, in my professional coaching that I do. And also the work I do with our team here. Um, this is, this is a helpful resource and it's become, again, I'm just trying to make it I'm trying to make tools approachable to people. And I think this resource has done exactly, uh, exactly that. And so, um, like we said, lots, lots of books that can be read. What, what other books were you reading, uh, in the process of this, uh, like that kind of, that were helpful to you in the midst of, of making this resource? Yeah. Um, let me think. I know I read the book back to, or the road back to the road you. back yep. to you. Um, the path between us, that one focuses a lot on relationships. Um, I did read, um, the Enneagram from a pers- Christian's perspective. Um, let me think the complete Enneagram. I'm sure there was some others. Yep. We can definitely, and we can, we can certainly, uh, put the resources in our show, in our show oh, notes yeah. link to those things. But, and I know, um, Beth McCord, she has some really good resources out there, especially yep. looking at it from a Christian perspective that I'd really recommend. A few summers ago, uh, our good friend, well, I, I like, I always like any podcast that I listen to that I'm a big fan. I just refer to them as my good friend. They're my friend. They don't know they're my friend. Uh, <laughs> my good friend, Annie F. Downs, uh, oh, yeah. did a fantastic uh, series in where she interviewed mm-hmm. the various personality types. I have never felt so seen in all of my life. Now, oh, yeah. now, mind you, I was listening to these mostly while mowing the lawn. And when they came, I'm a two. And so when they came to twos, I, I was like mowing along and it's just like, I'm just like, I, I'm crying and I'm just like, just like in a season of self discovery while, while mowing the lawn. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. So, uh, the, uh, that sounds fun podcast, uh, her Enneagram series. Yeah. Phenomenal. Super great. Would also recommend that. Um, See, so you've done all this. The book's been out in the wild for a year. For a year now, yeah. I, which, which a year this week actually. Wow, you looked that up. <laughs> I did. I looked it up. Because, well, because I got the when I got the email that they that they had been published and they were out and avail and available was was this week a year ago, and so uh, they're out living in the wild. In that time, you you now find yourself in a professional setting in the workplace. Mm-hmm. Talk to me. We're going to talk about the business thing, and then. And since Isaac is in the room and he he's on mute right now, but then I also want to have the conversation about the the merit the enneagram and, and marriage relationships because that's I think that's an interesting piece. But you've you're in the professional setting now. How has the enneagram been helpful to you in a workplace environment? Yeah, um, I will put out a disclaimer. I do work from home and I do have some interaction with people, but yeah. I'd probably have a better answer if I w- was actually working in <laughs> sure, person. Sure. I do have some connections with people, um, but just like personally, um, just knowing how I operate, especially like under stress and um, as a three, I can become a workaholic and just knowing that and like being very intentional about my work life balance and even with my marriage, yeah, like just knowing that I can be that way and understanding that helps me, you know, put put guideline guiders, you know, bumpers almost up for me. Um, just so I'm aware of how I can act when I can, you know, get in a work environment. But I think just, um, thinking about working with people and just being in interactions with any people, 
um, whether it is in the workplace, it's at church, you know, yeah. wherever you're around people. Um, it's just so good. Not that you're going through and like identifying people as you meet them. Like, Oh, I think you're this. I think you're that. I but would we, not suggest that. But we do secretly do that on occasion. <laughs> I should just put it out there every once in a while. Uh, if you've gotten to know somebody a little bit, it's a little bit of a fun game to play with yourself. Oh, yeah. Like, Hmm, I wonder, but yeah. So, and I think maybe even in the area of conflict, for instance, between oh, yeah. two people, I, if you can better understand the a value system uh, of another person and where they're where they're coming from, um, I know for me that's been super, really really helpful. Uh, like for instance, I like, I'm thinking of some conflicts I've had with like like type nines, for instance, which I, I'm a two. Nines and twos are frequently also confused for each other because we have some uh, similar outward behavior mm-hmm. uh, similarities. Um, but like I've like a nine known as the peacemaker. I know for me personally, when I see a nine operating in certain ways, uh, the, the, my past reaction has been like, these people need to get a spine. Like they need to stand up and <laughs> you know, they're cause a, a two has like a high moral compass, like a high moral compass. Right. And like when in, anyone like, um, Oh, uh, betrays our values. We just like experience that. It's like just a crushing moral blow. Like it's just, it, it's major. Um, not saying, not saying that I like have some sort of like elevated moral compass over anyone else, but like it feels that way sometimes. Um, but I began to realize like this, this criticism that I had for this, this type of person was a criticism not informed by their by their actual internal internal motivations, mm-hmm. and when you begin to understand the internal motivations, it does help form your conversations and form your uh, some of your conflict points and things like that a lot a lot better. And the honest the honest truth is, in the workplace, uh, EQ emotional intelligence wins the day. That that's the number one thing. That's the thing I look for on the team that I work with here. We're trying to develop that is know yourself know how you're perceived and received by others and then walk, um, walk confidently in that toward better connection with other Mm -hmm. people. And, and over the, over time that will win the day. Um, because people remember how you make them feel right. And how you, uh, what those interactions are like that. That's something that's, uh, boy, oh boy. I know we can all think back to a time in our life when we had, either a really good positive interaction with somebody, especially in our formative years, or we had a really negative one. There are some things I may, Megan, this is true for you that are just burned into my memory. Um, and, and so it's always great to be asking the question, what man, what is it like to be sitting on the other side of the table for me? How, how am I, how am I being received in, in oh, the yeah. way that I'm communicating? Are, and are there adjustments that I can make not to compromise who I am, mm-hmm. but to be better, un- to be better understood. And, and, and that goes, that goes both ways. So, okay. So that's your workplace environment. Uh, so here's where you get to, we'll see, speak for the two of you. And then if, if, if Isaac has like a, like a heavy disagreement, we'll just read his body language and then we'll <laughs> be like, no, he does not agree. Um, in your guys' marriage and you're, you're in the, you're in that sacred space of the first year where, uh, just, uh, boy, oh boy, it feels like there's a new adventure every day. Um, maybe, uh, how, how have you guys, uh, what, what's been the conversation that you guys have had as a, as a newly married couple, kind of in light of what you've discovered about your, about yourself. So maybe you could, I don't even know what Isaac is, what number he is anyway. So we haven't talked about that, but yeah. Um, I think in a lot of ways it's helped us just because I think when we first met was when Isaac was really starting to first learn about the Enneagram. Um, and he was a little skeptical about it, but I think, um, just through this first year of ma- marriage, you learn a lot about each other. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> and, I think through this, it gave us a way to communicate with each other, to help understand each other. We ha- It gave us like language for maybe understanding the things we wouldn't have understood right away. Um, for him, I'll expose him. He's a five. So he is one that likes to in- get, investigate. Um, you'll f- frequently find him in a book wanting to learn more about something. Um, and so with that, um, he's a lot more of a thinker than I am. 
um, where I fall more emotional, although we are both pretty emotional. <laughs> but um, I think... <laughs> 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 Boy, he's like, I, I am being exposed. Just everything just tossed right out there. Yep. But I think it's just allowed us um just to understand each other more where um once Isaac learns something the way I can love him is have allow him time to tell me about what he learned and just appreciate yep. um just the new knowledge he's found. Where for me he is very appreciative of when I, you know, do something to help him and um just really almost hypes me up. He's my hype man Ooh, um, nice. <laughs> to get me excited about when I do something pretty great, like writing this book. No, <laughs> yeah. or recording this po- or recording this podcast. Oh, yeah. Bingo. There we go. <laughs> nice. My guy. Um, yeah. I, I just think that uh, in so many of our social spheres, uh, our churches, our workplaces, uh, any community, our families that we're a part of, um, you know, John, I'm, I'm quoting all these, these old dead men. Uh, but you know, John Calvin himself said like, Hey, if you do not know yourself, you cannot know God. We actually just talked about that quote right before we came. Perfect. Bingo. (laughs) And I'm, I'm always short of John Calvin quotes, but that one I'll, that one I'll take to the bank. Um, you know, and that's, that's that's not a that's not a narcissistic or self centered thing to say at all. It's like uh, somehow the the mind of God and His creative power is manifest in His creation. That shouldn't be a that shouldn't be a surprise to us. And so you know, as we explore that, I just man, you know, the the deeper we get into um, the complexity of the human being. What's so interesting to me right now, like brain like brain scientists, you know, who who are they're academic researchers right and many of them are do not claim a faith of any kind whatsoever but they're what i love to see in a in a weird way is they are running out of language to use for what they're what they're finding about about human beings and because they're running out of language they're having to use strangely spiritual sounding language Mm -hmm. like joy and things like that right like and and i just think the deeper we go in using these tools, the more we can find out how, I mean, it is, it is a, it's an act of, it's an interesting act of worship to understand God's creation in a, in a, in a more interesting way, in a way that helps us connect with each other better, which is also the desire of God that we, that we are connected well and that we, that we do um, relate to each other. So I, I think that's a really, really uh, beautiful thing. But Megan, I just want to say like, again, um, Super helpful resource. Uh, I think these are the kind of conversations that we can have around around these tools. Um, you know, the, I, th- I think the the buzz on the enneagram has has sort of settled. It's sort of settled a bit. It's kind of now, like at least in my circles, it's sort of a, just a given. Mm-hmm. Like it's just kind of like you know, it's just a thing that's out there, and kind of everybody is getting more like familiar and comfortable yeah. with it. Um, but I, I just want to continue to say uh, specifically with regard to resources that are available about it uh, and for it. Um, this is a, this is a good one. You got a, you got a winner here. Thank you. You're welcome. So, <laughs> okay. So Megan, uh, this is the, uh, the great part of our show, the end of our show that always gets people a little bit nervous. So here we go. Okay. Dudes and Dads pop quiz. Uh, Megan, this is where I'm just going to ask you some questions. And uh, they're they're random, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, question number one, what's your favorite kind of soup? Soup? Mm, I think anything creamy. We often make cheeseburger soup. It's just a good mix of, I know it's not like, it's kind of weird if you've never heard of it before. but I'm intrigued. Oh, yeah. It has potatoes, lots of cheese, hamburger, so good. carrots, celery. So good. Uh, question number two, uh, favorite place you've ever vacationed? Hmm. That's a great question. We honestly haven't vacationed much, but we have done more in this past year than we have ever. So we're currently about to go on a trip. So that might be the best one. Okay. Let's, let's say it is. What, what's it going to be? We're going down to the Caribbean. Nice. So hopefully that will be good. (laughs) 
Gosh, you are Isaac. You're winning. You're winning here. Uh, let's see. Uh, question number three: If you weren't doing graphic design right now, and if you weren't doing graphic design, and you and you also, uh, for some strange reason, could not be in education, what's something else you might try? I honestly have really this past couple of years. I've had a lot of friends get, getting married, and so I have done some fun things for their bridal showers and I really like doing charcuterie boards and like creating them kind <laughs> nice. of a random thing, but no. like it's fun to make food look pretty. That's so good. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Um, your least in college, your least favorite class. Honestly, probably like my writing class. Cause I just, it was, I was really stressful as a freshman. I was still trying to be the, the irony, perfect student. The irony yeah. is not lost on me here. Yep, right I know. Right yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Writing's, writing stuff. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, the, um, uh, okay. Uh, if you could go back in time to one historical event to see it unfold, what would it be? I yeah mm-hmm. you're welcome. <laughs> hmm. I've never thought about this before. Just any old historical event. Isaac, do you have one that you would pick? No, you guys are just you. I mean, I like history, but I yeah. I don't know all like a lot of the history I think about is like I don't want to be in the middle of a war. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> like, <laughs> That's all I can think about right now. I mean, like the founding of our nation, that would be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. But like, yeah, sure. Okay. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact she defaulted. It was like, it's probably going to involve a war. There's probably going to be people fighting and dying everywhere. Oh my gosh. Okay. My last question to you, uh, will be, um, let's see here. Uh, if you could have, so this is another, I'm going to give you, this is, this is another kind of historical question, but maybe, maybe not. If you could have lunch with any person living or no longer living, who would it be and why? It'd probably be Jesus. Nice call. Good call. That sometimes <laughs> Jesus is the correct answer. I mean, honestly, if I go back yeah. to the other question, it'd be. Yeah. Be, I didn't think about how far I could go back, but like. There's a lot of history. Turns out. <laughs> Yeah, I always thought it would be, I just think, here's my thing. I want to know, I want to be, let's talk about historical event. I want to be with the disciples when Jesus walks through, walks through the wall. That's what I, mm. like, it's not clearly described exactly what in the world happened. I like to think, like, scientifically, did he just, like, re, like, move his atoms and, like, oh, yeah. to, like, what, what happened, right? Because they just, like, they're very chill about the description. Like, he just, like, walked through the wall. I'm like, I don't, mm, something's going on there. I'm I'm just, I want to know. But, okay, well, hey, uh, Megan, congratulations. You have absolutely passed the Dudes and Dads pop quiz. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is... Uh, there is no award other than just respecting yourself more. That's uh, that you've that you've accomplished in another task. Uh, so, Megan, I do want to say thanks for coming on and yeah. hang and hanging out. And uh, we look forward to kind of our future conversations. But we want, we thought this would be a good place to uh, launch. So, uh, yeah, um, you did it. You you've successfully been interviewed, and uh, you basically can uh, put this on your resume now. That was my plan. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, thanks you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks Megan for being on the show tonight. And, uh, I really appreciated all of the, um, the questions, the do's and heads pop quiz questions that you came up with on the spot. That was great. Joel. Yeah. And we tried to mix it up, a, mix it up a little bit. She did a great job. Uh, Megan, um, as we mentioned on the show, the handbook, the Enneagram uh, handbook resource that she has, we are making that available in our show notes. Uh, Megan said this, she goes, listen, you're going to get a better deal and, and, and super efficient personalized service. If you email her directly with a, with a book request, cause she has some available, uh, in her, uh, she's got a stockpile, Ooh, uh, a stockpile. Cause bec- she explained the whole thing. Like, they're printed elsewhere. If you order from another distributor, they're going to print them and then send them. But she has them ready 
uh, ready in her hands uh, right here in our, our local area to, to help out. So I would say anybody that's doing like any sort of like coaching work or leadership work or development work or any, if you're just interested in getting uh, your hands on some very kind of concrete, concise information and descriptions around the Enneagram, her handbook is a way to go. So right. we'll have and, and, that info. And I really appreciated it. So, so I appreciated the book because it was very, it was a kind of introduction. It was, yep. there are other books that I've read on the Enneagram, other podcasts that I've listened to. And I really appreciated her book because it goes into detail about each, each type, each one of the nine types. And then it also goes and talks a little bit about like in, in the, in health and in, in right. I almost said need in non-health and, yes. and it goes a lot of different places. So that's one of the things I really appreciated about her book. So again, check that out if you've not checked out. Megan's book. And then Joel, I wanted to talk a little bit too, because I don't think you guys really talked on, on your episode or on your interview about just, there's not just nine types. So that's one, this is one of the reasons I like the Enneagram. Yes. Now, other personality types testing. I hate for one. <laughs> it's such strong language. Well, he it, is, it is. And I think for me, it's because I always felt like I was in a box. Like it's like, okay, don't put me in a box because you know, this is who you are. Yeah. And I think the Enneagram is so different because for one, I would say it's more of a tool than a test. Yes, you can take a test. Sure. But I would always recommend not doing the test. I mm-hmm. would say read through Megan's book or any other book about the Enneagram and you're probably more likely going to find, you're, you're going to find where you're having it. Um, you, you'll be reading through it and you'll go, oh, that's me. Like, that's what I did. Sure. <laughs> it was like, yep. I did take a test, but then afterwards I was reading through like, the resources and it just hit me. It was like, Oh no, that's me. Like what, what's being described? Like, how do you know? That? Right. Right. How do you, someone's reading my mail and, oh. and in general, like as Megan shared, you know, like initially it was like, well, I'm a one or am I, and then maybe a three, you know, there, there might be some area that you have to further, further explore, but I would say, yeah, like you, like there's, you're going to narrow down some areas uh, pretty quickly. And then like with the wing, the, you know, the idea of wings and things like that. Megan really stresses the importance of subtypes. And again, in her handbook explains that, uh, the wings though are, are an interesting, uh, facet. You and I are actually, you and I are, we have different, like we have different wings, both twos, but different. Right. And I I think that's one of the things that I liked about the Enneagram a lot anyways, is because it, again, it wasn't just here are nine personality types, but then by a wing, we mean each, so, so if, if I'm a two, I could be a wing one or a wing three, meaning right. that I kind of lean, there's certain things from the, the numbers beside me mm-hmm. that kind of play into that. And then there's even more when you get in like the, in health and in non-health, or, you know, non-health where you kind of sure. go to other numbers across the thing. And so there's so much more than just, this is who I am. I mean, I think you can study for a while. Do you know on your, I'm just curious, cause I, I came across mine a little while ago, but like if there's a for your two wing, two wing oneness, if they have a, a term for that, like what they, what they call that. I don't, I don't think that there's a specific thing that they call. So I, cause I can tell that, you on a, for me, the two wing three, they call that the host. Interestingly enough, oh. <laughs> cause, cause I, I do host some things, <laughs> <laughs> but there's like a, the, the host or there's like a strong, um, uh, like hospitality component to it. Sure. Well, and I think so like with, I mean, I would, there's, a, there's several different apps that you can get too. And the one that I use, I think actually it's just called any app, <laughs> E N N E A app. And I like that one. Cause you can kind of go through and see, click, just click the numbers and you can see what that is. So it kind of like a main theme being for twos, uh, you know, survival depends on the love of others and approval of significance of others being connected with relationships uh, emphasis on helping. And then it also talks about, you know, characteristics and things like that. So I, I like the app. Um, but I don't, Joel, I don't know if there's a specific, like, or gotcha. what, they, what they call that, like two way. I'm trying to remember one. what resource I was reading a book where they, they gave, they gave some, like some definition or like special terminologies for, for wing types, sure. it, you know, and it's like, well, yeah, like host seemed right to me. Cause I enjoy, I enjoy hosting. Um, that, so that felt like 
that felt so, accurate, I guess. So I guess let me let me quickly read the brief descriptions. And again, I'm reading them off of the NEA app. But so type one would be the reformer. I mean, this is just the straight types, right. not yep. the wings. But right. the reformer type two is the helper. Type three is the achiever. Type four is the individualist. Type five is the investigator. Type six, the loyalist. Type seven, the enthusiast. Type eight, the challenger. Type nine, the peacemaker. Yeah. So, and there's like, again, like I said, there's like three different triads, the heart, the head, and the, what was the last one? I can't remember right now. Heart, head. Is there a gut? <laughs> Let me. There's a gut in there. I, I think. think so. Like kind of an internal, intu- internal, internally so intuitive. In in those triads, like that you, you end up having, um, yeah, it's gut triad. Uh, you, you kind of, there's a couple different numbers that have the, the kind of their main traits are, Head traits, heart traits, or yeah. gut gut traits. So. Yeah, yeah, and and again, I we always want to stress this. So, as you heard in the interview with Megan, you know, there's inevitably some pushback or some or some concern. Uh, I think for those of us that are Jesus followers, that are uh, that are first, um, um, our our commitments are our biblical commitments, and our commitments are one to not trusting in a in an assessment, but trusting in our relationship with Christ and all and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no problem with the enneagram whatsoever. I don't feel like I'm in, I'm engaging in uh, you know Christian voodoo of, of right. Of well, that, and of I think sort. I think but, some of that come like just pushback comes from the fact that it kind of does look like a pentagram, just the way that the numbers are laid yeah, out. Sure. Yeah, yeah, but, and and any of the well, any of that sort of stuff. Um, specifically because the Enneagram does have some pretty, pretty ancient roots. And, and here, here's the thing, not all entirely like completely Christian roots. Like we, right. We, we it rec- comes from different places. Right. We but recognize I, that. I think, I think that part of that though is, is it is a tool. So for me, like it is just something that you can use to, uh, again, like Megan said in her thing, it's the Bible is your first and foremost, like, who you are and what definition of God and yeah. how God defined you. But it does help you. The Enneagram does help you to kind of see. And, and like, again, I'm not saying that that's all like everything is true about the Enneagram, but those are just like the way kind of, kind of your types. You, you may not necessarily fit specifically into that yeah. a specific type, right. but those are kind of characteristics of who God has made you. And, and, some of those things are similar. Like those who have this trait are similar to others who have that same trait. And, yep. and so I use it as a tool cause I like to be able to say, okay, you know, I, I don't try to type other people, but I, if someone especially tells me, Hey, I'm a nine, like I know Julie's a nine for instance. And so for me, I know, okay, this is kind of how she is. And there's things that, that she appreciates or things that, you know, mean more to her. So I just know by looking at that, I go I have to remember, okay, like this is who she is yep. and these are some traits about her. So it allows me to have a better relationship with her because I can kind of play, play our relationship and I can do the things that are going to be the mean the most for her. That makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. so yeah, that that's kind of for me, for me as a tool. Yeah. I mean, and you're, I think what I hear you saying too, is that there is a, there's a certain, um, it helps you develop empathy toward another person. Oh Yeah. Um, not necessarily put them in a box or say like, oh, I like, oh, I know exactly who you, I mean, who you are you, and everything yeah. about you and want to label you. But, um, yeah. And, and that's the, <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest with you. Like, uh, my wife being a seven, the, the enthusiast, like to me, um, I don't know. The Enneagram as a tool help, did help me give it helped me significantly understand because I I will say there was there is there was a time in our relationship um, a few just a few years ago where I was yeah I was not understanding her well particularly understanding her well in times of stress sure like in like how like the kind of the general direction that she would that she would head sure uh let alone her in stress and me in stress because because andy i think as parents it's stressful <laughs> yeah i think we as parents find ourselves in stress at the same yeah at the same time and um my stress is probably contributing to her stress and vice versa so uh yeah i think 
uh, these are helpful conversations and mm-hmm. you know, and as I said to Megan, like the Enneagram, it's, it's playing itself out a, a bit now where it's kind of, it is normalizing a little bit and it's kind of in the background. And I, I'm just help, thankful even with the coaching stuff that I do. Like, again, I'm thankful for additional tools in the tool belt to help people gain some self-awareness to understand relational dynamics, to give some language around that, and then to help move them forward into greater into greater wholeness. Um, yeah, those are all those are all good things. Um, you know, and, and again, I did all my assessments like a few years ago, and I've revisited a few things. But like, I'm I'm not. I just have a good. Hopefully, my goal is to have a good general, well rounded awareness of these things. I'm not. I'm not processing. I'm not processing mm-hmm. life through the through the uh, lens of the enneagram twenty four seven. Right, um, and yeah. but I think it helps you n- again know how God created you, and it helps you to be able to process that and to also realize like that like how to. I don't know how to say that, but like it helps you. I think it can help you be fully who God created you to be. Like sure. it helps, it helps out in that and helps you realize like what's going a little bit more, what's going on in, in your brain and your mind. And I think that's a good thing. I agree. Do I you, agree. do you think Joel, and, and I don't rem- remember right offhand if you, if we covered this in the interview, but do you think that you can change your number? Like I know that when, when I first th- started out, I thought I was a different number. Um, but do you think that your number can change? I think, I'm not sure about change. What I have heard a lot of people say is, is that again, the, the initial number that they come up with may not, may not stick with them. Well, and I, I I guess that's for me why I would say do, I don't necessarily do a test for it. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things I liked about it because you know, the Myers Briggs and the other things you have, you have to take a test for it. And right. I found with the Enneagram that it's better for me to just go, Oh wow! Like this is me <laughs> as I'm as I'm reading through it, it's and they're because, describing but it's me because you're so self-aware, Andy. You just were able to say like, right. "Oh, I can identify these things. I can identify that my deepest joy comes from people needing me." That's <laughs> totally. That's totally. Well, that's totally fine. And, and uh, I mean, to be honest, I read through Megan's book, uh, you know, um, three months ago or something yeah. like that. Yep. And I read it straight front to back. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I read through all of the, the numbers through there. And yeah, when I hit my number two, it was like, Oh yes, that's me. And there are some other things that I, as I was reading through that, I, that did touch like who I was. I was mm-hmm. like, Oh, that, you know, there are aspects of this number that play into who I am. Right. Uh, and, and I think that, that, that was interesting, but that also goes along with the whole wings as well as like in health and in, in non-health as far as like, you know, when I'm healthy, I go jump across and that's what the lines are on the Enneagram. Right. Like that points to where you're, where, you know, you go to in health and then, and then non-health, you go to different, like kind of lean towards those different numbers. And, and not that that's anything that's good or, or bad. It's not saying if you're non-healthy that you're a bad person, but those yep. are just your traits when you're, when you're not exactly full you know fully healthy right and i so a good example here recently and i'm i'm kind of processing through this so a, a two goes to an eight and on and under stress mm-hmm. under stress and which means that you the two becomes more controlling uh tends to micromanage things 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 like that right and I think it's safe to say for both you and I, like that is like, that's a, th- that is a thing. Oh yeah. I think so. Yeah. And it, it, but see, I will sometimes recognize my, through the lens of an Enneagram, I will recognize my behavior that bef- before I recognize the fact that I'm stressed. Mm, that's interesting. I'll just start to say, huh, it's weird. I'm clicking into like right now, right now, I've got a project that I'm working on that involves um, some volunteer coordinating sort of things. And uh, the thing that I'm working on needs to, needs to be done. We have a definite within our faith community. We have a definite need for it, and I noticed like all of a sudden I have clicked into like high administrative mm, mode, like okay. organizing these things and trying to get this done. And I go now, good things are coming out of it, but I can see that on this current trajectory, like unchecked, I I can go into a place where I'm I'm basically just trying to like. Mm-hmm. Uh, Control everything. Control everything, make it the Joel show and whatever. So I have to be very, so 
So like uh, on to, like on Monday morning, I'm going to have a conversation with the person that I report to and say, hey, here's what I'm working on. But I want you to know that I think like keep your eyes open for me of not manhandling this thing, you know, and putting a <laughs> sure, chokehold on yeah. this thing all myself. Right. Like like here are my goals. Here's who I'm working with to help me. Um, can you just help me make sure that I'm staying on track with what mm-hmm. I with what I want to achieve? So I think that's again that's just an example, personal example of how this can be helpful proactively um, if you're kind of being in that reflective space. Sure, yeah, definitely. This has been a really good conversation, and it's again just the tip of the iceberg. I, there's so much more that we can go over with the Enneagram, and we would like to talk on about it. Um, we do realize though that not everyone is into the Enneagram, and so we are not going to do that back to back to back to back to back because that'll be <laughs> drown you in the Enneagram. That would be a long time. Nine for, episodes, yeah, nine episodes, which would be long. So we're not we're not going to do that. We're going to you know intersperse them throughout the next year or two um, and, and get them into that. But I think it's something that we need to be talking about because I think it helps out as dudes and dads. Yeah. It helps us uh, as dudes with not only the, all of the people around us, but your wife. I mean, it's going to, it's going to help you understand your wife better. I mean, that's one of the things that I've appreciated about it is to see the the nineness of my wife mm. and to know that and to be able to, like I said earlier, play into and adjust how I'm acting for that. So we can have a, a, a better relationship and uh, but your kids it's gonna help you be better dad because you're, you're gonna you know you, it's always been told don't, you know don't type your give people other people and also especially like don't have your kids type it, like because kids in general are going to change and they're more. Still, yeah they're, they're, they're still pliable they're still pliable and they're still developing but. so but 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 i know as as a dad it, julie and i have sat down and kind of said okay we, we would guess that this <laughs> is probably who they are like as far as their tendencies like right. this is that they, they are this number as of right now yeah um but it's going to help you to be able to kind of play into and have a better overall relationship and to just understand who god made you to be yeah and so yeah. again i yeah. thanks guys for 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 sticking with us on this episode and thanks megan for uh writing this book it's a beautiful book she's a yeah. graphic designer and it's beautiful and by the way i've also megan uh megan also does graphic design uh, like like side gigs this too so she works works for a company full-time but also so for those of you that are looking for a little additional graphic design help from a true professional. Uh, again, we're making uh, uh, we're making a Megan uh, as as easy to find as possible. Uh, putting her, uh, we got her email address up in the show notes, and uh, you can get a hold of her if you want a copy or fifteen copies of her She'd handbook. Be happy to She'd hand, be happy yeah. to send them to you, uh, or even as she did, uh, uh, hand deliver them. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I got the, you got your hand delivered right, huh? to, right to my office. <laughs> yep, right to my office. So uh, yeah. yes. So thanks, Megan. Appreciate you. Uh, as always, you can head over to dudesanddadspodcast dot com for all of the juicy details about the show uh, and show notes and everything like that and we love to get feedback so feedback at dudesanddadspodcast.com or even better your audio feedback we love to hear audio feedback so 574-213-8702 or you can just email that file to feedback if you you know take out your voice recorder on your phone and nice. record something and send do it, it to us so do it yeah and uh yeah dudes and dads podcast at gmail.com for uh for an email if you're still into that i don't think i don't think email is here to stay but uh feel free feel free to send one to us uh guys we appreciate you hanging with us until next time we wish you grace and peace Want to see some more of us? Head over and meet us on Instagram 